Hey, what's up? Tom's back with you again. Thanks for joining me on Rhythm's Riddle. Today I've got an awesome list for you. This is going to be an awesome podcast. Top 25 best nonfiction. So let's get right into it because there's something to say about each one of these excellent books. And chances are you, you probably haven't read most of them and you will want to. So let's jump in here. Number 25. In Search of Duende by Federico Garcia Lorca. And now I know this is partially uh, a book of poems, but there's nonfiction in here too. And it's beautiful. It's lovely, especially anybody who likes flamenco guitar. You're going to be uh, pepped and stoked by this book, for sure. All right, moving on. Number 24. The Crown of Life by Kirpal Singh, A Study in Yoga. Now, this is... The, the most concise and uh, detailed overview of all of yoga that goes into to all of the different kinds and the underlying philosophy of Advaitism at the heart of it and so forth. So this is a great book for anybody who likes this kind of thing, yoga and spirituality, uh, which catapults us into number 23, the autobiography of a yogi and by Yogananda. Excellent book. I mean, it's just so fun to read. You're going to, you won't be able to put it down. It's really good. Now, how much of it is actually fictionalized? It's hard to say, but he, he claims to be speaking the truth that from his experience, all of these things happened. So, you know, be your, be your own judge with it. But it's still, nonetheless, the, the concepts and the stories within it are so intriguing. It's one of those books that uh, you, you see sitting around for a long time. Once you finally pick it up, you, you wonder why you waited for so long. Number 22, Thomas Merton, Conjectures of a Guilty Bystander. What can I say? I mean, it's just the book is so dense and has so many references to other thinkers and other writers. Uh, he's Merton is one of those pillars. All right. 21. Salvador Dali. Yeah, he wrote nonfiction. This book, Dali on Modern Art. It's going to be over your head. I mean, even if you're really, really smart, you're going to read Dali on modern art and, and it's like going to go way over your head. Your, your jaw will drop and you'll be like, what? <laughs> what is he talking about? And then on the, like the 20, 23rd reading, it will start to dawn on you that he's actually making exact sense. He's speaking exactly what he means. So, number 20. Michael, here's a good book. This one's fun. It's a history book. Michael uh, Crichton, C-R-I-C-H-T-O-N. The Great Train Robbery. It's about uh, just that. The, there was a, there have been many great train robberies. This one was in England and it goes into all, all of the details. It, it's such an intriguing and true story. It's uh, during the Crimean War. That's the, the time. So when was that like? 1800 sometime incredible book you won't be able to put it down lots of these books are going to be like that like the next one another history book you will not be able to put down and it's so pivotal to all of the world it's called over the edge of the world by lawrence burgreen and it's a, a very faithful history of the first circumnavigation of the globe by Ferdinand Magellan and his Ar Armada de Mayuca, or Maluca, which Magellan, of course, died in the Philippines, those of you who know, but uh, his Armada made it back, so they did. They were successful, 
and the reading is one of the, those books too. Uh, every every chapter and every page I had to read over twice just to savor how wonderful this information was to know. Uh, next one, another history book that you won't put down. This one is so good, so pivotal. Bernal Diaz, The Conquest of New Spain. It's a firsthand account by one of the soldiers who fought uh, on three or four of the expeditions into Mexico, culminating in the, the one with Cortez. <laughs> you don't read this in school because school is, is so corrupt. That's why. This is the first thing we should be reading in, in history. Absolutely. The Conquest of New Spain. What a book. It's just, you learn so much. I learned so much. Moving on. Uh, Auto, another autobiography. This one, the autobiography of Malcolm X. Yes, it's uh, life-changing and moving and completely enthralling. What what the popular media has has uh, framed Malcolm X as is not who he is, and you learn that in his autobiography. He was an astounding and and uh, broad-minded humanitarian person. All right, got to read it. Next one, Carl Jung. Uh, wait. Yeah, Carl Jung, Man in Search of a Soul. Uh, I picked this one out because the rest of his books, like who the hell can understand Carl Jung? I mean, he's so dense. He just, it's like, well, I don't gain very much if I don't understand. Like the book on Dali, you, Dali on Modern Art, you're not going to gain very much except for the fact that it will broaden your um, it will definitely broaden your vocabulary and get you uh, thinking about art in new ways. And so that'll be great. Let's move on and, and make this a short video, even though this is, it's going to get, it's getting really good here. All right. Next one, 15, Nietzsche. Which book by Nietzsche? There's only one on this list I put. All of his books are good, by the way. In fact, his best one, maybe I should not say this one, I should say his first book, the the Birth of Tragedy, his first essays, is was, was his best. But I'm going to say The Gay Science is number 15 up there because it. I think it has everything that Beyond Good and Evil has, but uh, just in a more concise way. It's easier to read in that way. The Gay Science by Nietzsche. Better. So it's better than Beyond Good and Evil in some ways, but it, it's very similar to it in a lot of ways. All right, moving on to an amazing book, number 14, Bruce Chatwin, The Song Lines. This is about the, 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 the way that the aboriginals of Australia sing their history into the land and the, the, their natural environment. Uh, it's a very deep, and profound book. I have to recommend this for on the top tw 25 nonfiction. Uh, next one, number 13, uh, Essential Sufism by Fadiman and Frazier. Lots of books out there on Sufism. What I like about this one is it, it, it isn't uh, pretentious. It doesn't claim to have a key to Sufism, some sort of alchemical key with uh, like different weird charts and, and mythical diagrams and things like that, which that's not bad, but overall it's cumbersome and confusing. What I like about this compendium of Sufism is that it's categorized in into uh, chapters by theme, like one on um, devotion, another on finding a master, a guru, another on uh, like contemplation and others on greed and ego and stuff like that. So they, they center their, their Sufism and yet they go all around the board and like they, they bring Sufi thought from very diverse authors from all over the world, from all times. So it's a very good book. Got to recommend that, this one. All right. Number 12, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. I don't remember what it was called, his musical treatises or his musical essay. That, I read that a long time ago, so I don't remember what it was. I don't have it anymore, but 
that book. Whatever Rousseau wrote there on music, I remember was so... Uh, it was amazing. He wrote that 300 years ago, and yet even to this day, it, it's so applicable and detailed and, and psychologically uh, acute. It's a beautiful meditation, on, and it's like hardly been surpassed since then. And many people have tried to talk about music since then. All right. Number 11. Here's one that's going to come from left field for you. Outlook for Intelligence by Paul Valeri. This is a, about 100 years old. Uh, he was a French intellectual. Brilliant mind. Uh, incredible thinker. So, so like, intriguing and uh, thought-provoking. Absolutely. Outlook for Intelligence. I keep, you know, I'm still yet to read more of Valeri. I, I can't wait to read more of Paul Valeri. All right, moving on. Number 10, Terence McKenna, The Food of the Gods. Got to put a book by McKenna on there. Firstly, it's like it's the, the core of what McKenna is all about. He's the, the, the mushroom prophet, ultimately. And uh, it's also his most... Uh, easy to read book i'd say the rest of his books are so uh difficult <laughs> mckenna was a speaker he was the best as a speaker right all right number nine this book i just read twice i just read for a second time marlo morgan the mutant message down under amazing book just just read it it's the, the story, a lot of people, and Marlo Morgan is a woman who went on walkabout, and a lot of people claimed that she, she fictionalized uh, a lot of the book, because it's easy to think that, and it's uh, even easier to say that, but uh, after seeing an interview with Marlo Morgan, I'm ab absolutely convinced, and by the book itself, the book was pretty convincing, even though y you were left feeling like, could, could that be true? No, someone... Like an editor is, is beefing things up, right? Nope. Nope. After seeing her in an interview, this, is, this all happened. This is all true. These are all true stories. It's, uh, it changed my life. This book, uh, Mutant Message Down Under by Marlo Morgan. Beautiful book. Moving on. Number eight. Simone Weil, W-E-I-L. Reader. It's a compendium of, of her thought and some of her letters and essays. Simone Weil is one of those uh, ladies uh, who was, um, well, she was semi-well-known, but she's completely overlooked by history and has been marginalized. She was a very pivotal thinker and has uh, had a lot that was so important to say that even to this day, reading her um, thoughts on, for instance, she had one on, on um, uprootedness and nationhood, and essays like this, I mean, very profound and, and, and pertinent thinker of our time. Um, number seven, Thomas Merton, The Seven Story Mountain. That's his autobiography. Once you get into Merton and become a Merton fan, then you, 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 you read his autobiography only then, because you'll appreciate it all the more. Uh, so if those of you who are already Merton fans, then, you know... Well, check out his poetry, too. <laughs> his poetry is excellent in every sense of the word. Uh, I had a tick. All right. That's a bug. All right. So, The Seven Story Mountain, the autobiography of Thomas Merton. This is the autobiography of a writer and a, a monk, a contemplative. It's, it's one of the best autobiographies in the world for that reason. All right, let's move on. Number six, The Shoshonians by Edward Dorn and Leroy Lucas. This is a, a, a book of photographs and travel essays that just, it just blows your mind. And, and the, the way that Luke, that uh, Edward Dorn writes is just so different and pleasurable to read. And the photographs are even better than anything else. In fact, some, there's some photographs in that book that I would say are the most iconic photographs of the 20th century. 
That's what I would say. I would say that there's a few photographs in that book that they would take the gold medal for the most iconic photographs of the 20th century. So this book is life-changing, the Shoshoneans. Number five, moving on, Theodora Krober, Is She in Two Worlds? It's a, a true story of the last of his tribe by a lady who knew him personally and was actually very close to him. And the circumstances surrounding that are all detailed in this book so thoroughly and so uh, compassionately and uh, tastefully that <laughs> this is a book, one of those books that everyone should be reading in school too. All right, number four. Okay, number four, Pascal, Penzies. Pascal is one of those writers, although also like several hundred years old, is, is so pertinent. I mean, everyone's heard of Pascal, right? The Pascal, right? I believe, I believe we're talking about Blaise Pascal. He wrote Penzies. His, he was more than just a mathematician. His, his philosophical uh, writings were... Uh, definitely you got to read them at least what, what they I got to go back and comb through them and figure them out but he was basically there was a lot in in that but I remember he was arguing with the uh, with the Jesuits uh, on certain matters all right risky business number three this book I heard Terence McKenna say in one of his talks he was asked what's the best book you can recommend and the best, or the best nonfiction or something. What, what would you say is the best book? And Terence McKenna said, for number three, Caesar Calvo, The Three Halves of Eno Mosho. So I read it, and he's right. It's one of the best books out there. It's, it'll take you into the heart of the Amazon and life, the ancient life uh, from, of the, the Amawaka and the uh, the different tribes of the great Pajonal, which is just the great expanding, expanding uh, rainforest plain. That's a flood plain that goes on for millions of square kilometers. So uh, it's a beautiful story. It's really about shamanism uh, at the heart of it. And it's written in a unique way, but it's also full of uh, incredible detail and anthropological uh, um, knowledge. Let's put it at that. Okay, number two. The best nonfiction. This is Richard Feynman. Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. <laughs> You'll love this book. Any intellectual. If you're intellectual, man, you're going to love this book. This book that was written by a genius, and it's a, uh, this guy is such uh, well, everyone has heard of Feynman. A lot of people know, know of Richard Feynman. What, just an entertaining writer at that too. Not only was he a genius, uh, he was such a, 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 a unique thinker. This is a guy that was never bored, and you'll see that. Like all of his experiments and the, the way he, the stories he tells, it's such a good book. Beautiful. I love it. Richard Feynman, number two. And then number one, for the best, um, top 25 best nonfiction, I'm going to give you Camille Paglia, Sexual Persona. This collection of essays is, it's just, it's over my head. It's just over the top good. And she's discussing at the core mythology uh, uh, and uh, sexual persona in art from ancient times, from ancient Egypt, uh, all the way through the, the modern era and modern writers. And it's an incredible tour de force. Uh, so Camille Paglia gets number top number one. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Let me leave your comments in the box. Uh, I appreciate it when your comments flow. That's what helps my channel grow. And I hope you've appreciated looking at the iconic 
Castle Rock State Park in the background. Thanks for tuning in to Rhythm's Riddle and please come back again soon.